In this episode, it is time to leave Panama behind and set sail to Galapagos, an expensive island group to visit with a lot of paperwork. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart, and here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33-foot sailboat. Tranquility. The last time we transited through the Panama Canal, it was one of the most exciting things we had ever done, and we told you everything. New marina, so time to look for. Our final week in Panama, in Panama City. Swimming pool. A swimming pool. Ba -ba. Ba -ba. I see a dangerous curry curry. Oh, it's dangerous. It's the sharks in the flam bath. In the swimming pool? Yes, in the flaming pool. Are there sharks in the swimming pool? Yes. <gasps> Alright, try to jump in, Liz. No. I get in my bar. Besides the swimming pool, there is also some wildlife, like raccoons and slots. Really cool. We have a very busy schedule. Of course we want to see a little bit of Panama City, so we go to Casco Vieja the old part of the city and stroll around. But the biggest part is reorganizing the boat, provisioning and complete our application for the Autobiografico Vogel Apagos. And there are a lot of regulations. It's dark inside, and what are we doing? <laughs> Nothing. Well, Listen counting on. all the tins Listen. we have on board to see what we need to shop for a big crossing. Very important stuff: tomato uh, slices, kidney beans, and then the rest is just a mix of all different kinds of beans and it's hot but uh, I have the best help on board yes my turn we emptied it and now it's time to count okay. Three, four, five, six, seven. 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 Yeah, you can pack. All sorted. Enough space for some extra. We have enough space for some extra cans to fill the bilge. Okay, so we're in a big supermarket and it's not only shopping for a big crossing, because we're only going to Galapagos for 10, well, 10 days max crossing, but after Galapagos we go to French Polynesia. And everything there is very expensive or not available. So we have to stock up for more than four months. Uh, Kim is with another card and we already did one shopping round uh, the other day and probably tomorrow we go for another round so I hope we have enough room in tranquility. 
I just received an email from our agent in the Galapagos with all a checklist of all the regulations in the Galapagos, like um, well the official documents of course you need to present, but also all your medicines you have on board, the, your ten last ports, uh, fumigation, hull clean certificate, and your anti-fouling paint certificate. Foods and stuff you cannot bring in, like berries, fresh coffee beans, nuts, uh, animals are not allowed, plants. So yeah, it's a, it's quite a list. So we are now going through, so we have everything because we will leave tomorrow. Can we bring mangoes? No. Can we bring oranges? And what will happen is that once we arrive in San Cristobal, in Rack Bay, that's the mandatory port to clear in. Uh, eight to ten officials will come on board and you have one or two divers underneath your boat. They will check the whole hole if it's clean and the officials will go through the boat and inspect all your lockers and um, everything. Your black water, grey water, bilge. So yeah, it's it, it feels a little bit nerve-wracking because you don't want to make a mistake. Um, and of course, but so yeah, it's a, a, li a little bit nerve-wracking, but still worth it, I think. But we will tell you that once we visit Galapagos. But for now, so you know, the feeling is a little bit like. Ee! So we need a really clean hole when we enter Galapagos. If it's not clean you have to leave and get 40 nautical miles out off the coast of Galapagos to clean it and then come back. Before we set sail we clean our hull and we will do it also one day before arrival. The authorities are really strict and we do not want to risk being sent away. I am... Uh doing all our paperwork for the Galapagos Islands. We need a, a hull cleaning certificate and a fumigation report. Um, you can do your hull cleaning certificate by yourself, that's no problem, uh, but we know that these islands are very keen on official papers with a stamp. Now I know that there are some boats out there who have uh, a, um, a boat stamp. We have never thought about it to make a boat stamp in the Netherlands, so we don't have one. But then Kim has got a brilliant idea. Um, we have got a stamp kit, which we took for Liz. And it happens to have a very nice looking T of tranquility of course so there we go boat stamp departure day our most stressful departure ever because our agent does not agree with our self-made hole cleaning certificate. He demands a professional one, like the one we have from Shelter Bay no. Marina. Okay. But that one is outdated, because it has to be less than one week old before departure. It is random what is obligated and what not. It differs per agent. Not all demand the professional one. Just a certificate made by yourself is okay. You have to stand for a clean hole but not ours, he wants a professional one. So we got in contact with our agent and he told us that if we could get an updated version of our professional one, it was okay. So we did not need to do another professional hole cleaning, just a different date. So we changed the date and that was sufficient, but it was not a nice feeling. As you can see, we're sailing. Um, we just uh, got our uh, text back from uh, Javier and uh, he uh, is okay with our document. 
Galapagos is an expensive destination because there are a lot of costs involved for clearance. In total we pay $2386.60. It includes the permit for two adults, a child, the inspection cost, port cabin like the International Sarpen, National Park entry fees, agent fee and the permit for fuel. But it does not include the cost for a professional hole cleaning certificate and the fumigation report. You have to arrange that yourself. We just have the perfect conditions to test our new setup uh, with the twin head sails. I mean, it's uh, it's be better weather for. Sorry, it's actually better weather for the parasailer now. Um, but we haven't tested this system yet, so it's it's just amazing that it just works really well. You roll it out and. It's now 13 and a half knots and we're doing 5.2 speed through water, so that's, that's perfect. The whole cleaning can be done by a diver or on the heart, just like we did. And for the fumigation you can get a real one or you just pay for the paper. $60. So really high cost, but also a once in a lifetime experience and a chance for us to split up the Pacific crossing to the Marquesas. If it's worth it, we will let you know once we have explored Galapagos. Our first day on the Pacific Ocean and uh, we still have wind. So last night we made uh, a good speed and good progress and right now we still have around 16, 17 knots of wind and we make an effort of 6 uh, knots of speed. So really nice conditions um, wind-wise. The waves are now okay with the parasailer on, but uh, with the two head sails it was really rolly. But yeah, can't have everything. So yeah, first day, I think we were uh, lucky that we didn't have um, that much waves, so no seasickness for the both of us, we didn't took any medication, um, but, uh, but still we got that first day fuel, or at least I have, I think Kim has it as well, the first day of uh, a little bit of a headache in the back. Not really want to do this this much, um, so no no fishing today. Um, but that's fresh meals. Kim made a fresh meal, so that's that's very good. I mean, respect to Kim. She just cooked a delicious pasta with fresh vegetables, and uh, yeah, now uh, the dishes are almost done, and then it's back to relaxing time. Maybe uh, maybe a first shower. Let's see. Liz, what's going on? Mama can sleep tonight. Is Mama going to sleep? Yes, I sleep in two nights. 
Find time to sleep. I is on the slapper. And, and what's going to happen when she's asleep? And then we go and sleep. Sleepy. A lollipop. A lollipop. A lollipop. Then you can have a lollipop. Ah, so you want mommy to sleep. Did mommy sleep already? Yes, I found it to sleep. Yes, really? Yes, really. You think she's asleep? No, yes. Wake me up because we have 20 knots of uh, wind. 23, 23. 23. Oh, 23 knots of wind, so we want to get the parasailer down there. Yes. Thank God it's parasailer, not a spinnaker. Uh, it's still manageable, but uh, we wanted to take it down. So we needed to uh, change course a bit and in this case the twin head sails had to come down because they only can up, go up to 120 degrees wind angle um, and we are going 90 now so we ro roll them in and put up our mainsail again but because we made two exact copies of the of the uh, head sails we can let them be together and have them as a normal genoa on one side the dark ground fabric is very uh, slippery against each other so they won't damage each other that much so it's not the setup for the, it's not the setup for uh, for days but for uh, a couple of hours it's uh, it's no problem Yeah, it's really so cool because we have uh, almost full moon uh, during our night shift. And it makes the ocean so light and bright, and uh, you can see some color. It's uh, amazing. So peaceful. And we still have the bird on board. We don't know what the birds. What kind of bird it is? Still sleeping.
Good night everyone, it's four o'clock in the morning. Yesterday we had to adjust the sails because we were going more close reaching. Um, we are at 80 degrees through wind angle and um, the wind dropped to six, seven knots of, boat, of wind speed. And, um, but it's fine because the waves are completely gone and because it's upwind sailing we are doing 4.3 knots and we have some current of about 0.7 knots with us so we're doing actually more than 5 knots which is <laughs> quite perfect um, I mean this, this really is the best sailing you can have it's a, a calm flat ocean you can sleep very well and still making some good progress. So, uh, yeah. For now, I'm going to uh, start sleeping a bit and uh, put my alarm every 40 minutes and have a look around. The conditions are way calmer than yesterday. Actually, really calm. It's almost no wind, but we're still making four knots, so that's acceptable. Bart is asleep, and um, I think when he wakes up, we will hoist a parasailer, but we will see. And Liz and I are playing a game. Energy is back, so uh, yeah, this is really good. I could sit around and wait all day You lay easy on my mind In the next episode we prepare our check-in process to Galapagos Well this was it, if you have any questions please let us know and for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.